Hello, welcome to the Power Platform Pro Dev Series. My name is Rahul Ranjit. I'm a senior program manager with the Parkhead team. In this session, we are going to explore Power Platform connectors. How does a Canvas app or a Power Automate talk to an external application? As a part of this session, we will cover the following topics. Connector fundamentals, connector architecture, custom connectors. We will then build a few applications to reinforce the concepts covered. As a part of the demo, we'll build a connector from scratch. We'll also look at the tight integration between Power Platform and Azure by building a connector for a service exposed via APIM. Before we jump in, prerequisites for this session. This session builds upon some foundational topics like Power Apps, Power Automate, since we are going to talk about integration with external systems, you're also expected to understand basics of REST, OAuth 2.0, and the Azure API Manager. Now that we have that out of the way, let's jump right in. Microsoft Power Platform is a low-code platform which allows you to build scalable, platform-agnostic, responsive applications and websites, workflows, and chatbots. Use Power Virtual Agents to build powerful chatbots with low code. Use Power Apps to build responsive, platform agnostic web based front ends. Build powerful and scalable workflows using Power Automate. Build low code websites using Power Pages. Leverage Dataverse for your data storage and modeling. And infuse your applications with AI using AI Builder. Bring the data stored in Dataverse and external systems together and build rich reports using Power BI. Microsoft Power Platform is more than the sum of its parts. You can connect them together to M365, to Dynamics 365, Azure, and hundreds of other apps to build end-to-end -end business solutions. In this session, we are going to focus on connectors, which allows a pro developer or a citizen developer to integrate it with external applications. So what is a connector? A connector is a formal definition of a REST API that allows the REST service to talk to Microsoft Flow and Power Apps. A connector contains a set of actions and triggers. While it's mandatory for a connector to have at least one action, triggers are not mandatory. What is an action? Each connector offers a set of operations classified as actions. Once you connect the underlying service, these operations can be easily leveraged within your apps and workflows. What is a trigger? Several connectors provide triggers that can notify your app when a specific event occurs. There are two types of triggers. Polling. These triggers call your service at a specified frequency to check for new data. When new data is available, it causes a new run of your workflow instance with that data as the input. Push. These triggers listen to data on an endpoint. That is, they wait for an event to occur. The occurrence of this event causes a new run of your workflow instance. Now, triggers are not supported as a part of Power Apps. They're supported as a power, part of the Power Automate flows. Now that we have the definition of the connector uh, reviewed, let's take a look at what a connection is. When a user opens an app using a connector, a connection is created and it's associated with the user, the application, and the credentials used to access the service. The runtime calls to the API occurs in the context of the connection. A connection also has an associated a set of users called as the access control list. Um, these are users who have access to that connection. The owner of a connection is always a part of this list. When an app using a connector is shared with another user, the connections are either implicitly or explicitly shared with the user. An implicitly shared connection means that the user who now has access to the app also has access to the connection along with its associated credentials. For example, connectors with SQL authentication, API authentication, etc. These are shared implicitly. With explicit sharing, connections are not shared instead. When the app is run for the first time, the user is prompted to explicitly grant privileges. For example, 
connectors leveraging OAuth 2.0 fall into that category. Connector architecture. When a power app or a power automated flow leverages a connector, it first sends the user token, the associated connector ID, the operation ID, and connection ID to the connector services. This is, the, this is fronted by an Azure API instance. Using the data sent by the app of flow, the system then re retrieves the credentials from the credential and the metadata store. In some cases, if the service is a straightforward REST API call, the endpoint is invoked using the details of the connector and the credentials retrieved. For some connectors, like a SQL connector, or in situations where there is a complex transformation of input or output, the details are forwarded to the web app hosted in the Azure App Service environment, which then connects to the endpoint, performs the operation, and returns the data. To connect services hosted on-premises and not exposed externally, you can use the on-premises data gateway as well. Custom connectors. While Power Platform offers over 700 plus connectors out of the box, you may want to communicate with the services that aren't available as pre-built connectors. Custom Connectors addresses this scenario by allowing you to create and even share a connector with its own triggers and actions. To create a custom connector, you need to understand the service, the actions available, the inputs to the actions, and the outputs returned. In addition, if the service provides a mechanism to register webhooks, you can configure triggers in your connector as well. Once you have a good understanding of how the service works, you can then get started with the creation of a connector. Power Platform allows you to create a connector from scratch, import an open API definition, a Postman collection. For services hosted in Azure, Power Platform has built-in integration which allows you to create a custom connector with a few clicks. As a part of defining the connector, you also get to define the authentication used by the API. You have a few options. You can talk to services which are not authenticated or use basic authentication, API key, or OAuth 2.0. And we also have some specific implementation of OAuth 2.0 like Azure AD, Salesforce, etc., available as drop-down options. After you define your actions, triggers, policies, you now have defined your connector. Let's look more closely at each of these steps. Creating a custom connector. To begin with, you can create a custom connector from any of the following options, and all of these options are available on the Maker portal. One, you could use the wizard experience to build it from scratch. You can import an open API 2.0 file imported from a URL that points to an OpenAPI 2.0 definition. Imported from your Azure tenant, Power Platform provides tight integration with services like APIM, Azure Functions, etc. that allow you to create a custom connector within a few clicks. You can also import it from a Postman collection. The product team curates a definition of connectors at the link shown above. Power Platform can connect to the repo and pull down the definition from that endpoint as well. The next step is security. Before you invoke an API successfully, you should authenticate successfully with the API. Power Platform connectors support the following authentication mechanisms. You can talk to an unauthenticated REST API, an API secured using basic authentication, APIs using API key, any API secured using OAuth 2.0, the modality here is uh, authorization code flow, and specific services like Azure AD and Salesforce, while they also use OAuth 2.0, they are available as dropdowns under the security options. Now that security is taken care of, you then proceed to defining your actions that your connector exposes. Actions are functions that can be consumed by an app or a flow. Actions corresponds to methods exposed by the endpoint. When building connectors, you can choose to expose all the actions or a subset of the actions. You can pass complex objects to an action, and you can also process the output returned by that API call. Triggers allow you to extend your connector functionality, where a system needs to respond to the changes in the underlying data or services. 
For example, if you want to start a Power Automate flow when the record is submitted in your own service. Now this can be used in situations like sending an email or an SMS when an order is created, etc. Now, after you define your actions, you then proceed with defining your triggers. Also note that triggers are not mandatory in Nectar. Now, there are two types of triggers polling triggers. In this type of trigger, the data is polled using cleverly crafted filters, for example, to get all the orders created since 8 a.m. These filters are then stored as state and updated appropriately after each poll. The second type of triggers are called as webhooks. In this type of trigger, the API exposes an endpoint to register a URL. This URL will then be invoked by the API when an underlying change occurs. On invoking the URL, the flow associated with that URL is triggered. Let's take a closer look. The flow runtime invokes an initial call on the trigger to the API in the connector. The connector will then call the backend service. The backend service then returns all the current data back to the connector. The connector in turn returns a accepted message, a retry interval, and a location header that includes the current state. The retry interval is in seconds. The first call is always used to establish the preliminary state of the data. After the retry interval times out, the flow runtime makes another call to the connector using the location header, the current state. In this example, it's one. The connector now knows because the state is now equal to one to call the proper API and that will do the proper appropriate filtering so that the correct set of data is returned. In this example, the connector translates it into a filtered query that says the created date is greater than the certain timestamp. In this example, there's no new data. So uh, it just comes back with an empty uh, set of values then the connector returns uh, uh, the confirmation, accepted, an accepted message, a retry interval location header in which the state hasn't changed yet. After the retry interval times out again, the flow makes another call to the connector using the same location header and state. Again, the connector does the appropriate filtering using the created on date. This time, the new data becomes available and since since the created date. So the backend returns a value of all the new data back to the connector. The connector now returns an accepted message or retry interval and the new state value and an array of values containing all the new data that becomes available after the created date. Because new data is then available to the flow, the flow will be triggered for each of that data returned by the service. With webhooks, the client, which is the flow runtime in this case, does not have to poll the API for changes. Instead, a unique URL is sent to the API along with any data that specifies the event it wants to know about. It's now the responsibility of the API to send the event payload to the URL when the event occurs. This means to create a trigger, the API you're connecting to should support webhooks. Let's review the prerequisites for the API so that you can create a connector with a webhook trigger. One, creation of the webhook. The API should expose a method which allows a client to register a URL. Two, the schema of the hook request or the event payload. Three, the ability to delete the webhook, a mechanism to deregister a URL from the webhook. Now let's walk through this process from the perspective of a maker who creates a flow which runs when an event occurs. When a maker creates a workflow based on the event, the flow runtime uses the webhook creation method to automatically generate a URL and register it with the API. The API stores the URL and then uses it to send a payload when the relevant event occurs. When the workflow is deleted by the maker, the flow runtime performs the cleanup by invoking the delete webhook method. The API removes the trigger from the list of registered endpoints. Now let's take a look at how to build a connector from scratch. So what you have here on screen is uh, a URL that points to the Swagger definition of a service. Uh, this is a publicly hosted API with information that 
uh, returns data about a technical conference. Um, we can take a look at into this uh, definition more, but what we will do is we're going to start building this, um, uh, building a connector uh, that can talk to this service. So the first thing that you do is you go to make not power apps. And once you are in the Power Apps environment, in the Maker Portal, uh, you then select the environment that you would like to work. So I picked up the environment that I'm going to use here. And then once that is done, um, on the left now, you basically have a few links. Um, what you do is you go to Dataverse and open up custom connectors. This shows you a list of all the custom connectors in your environment. So we have multiple options here that we can select. So we are going to build one from a URL. So I'm going to call this my so conference connector. Right. And then I'm going to copy this URL and put it right here. Click on import. Click continue. And I, this basically takes lands me up on this screen. So the first thing that uh, comes up is, hey, there is a connector name that you can provide. Uh, I just provided a default connector name. Um, and then based on the inputs from the Swagger definition, it uh, identified the host, the protocol, etc. Now in the security, it actually assumes that it needs an API key. Actually, this uh, API is not authenticated. It's a test service that uh, you can all go and play with. Uh, it'll be available as a part of this link. So I'm gonna basically mark this as no authentication. Keep going. And now you can see that you you have got to the, uh, the definition side of the part of the connector. So you can see that all of these methods are available on the left-hand side. Now. Even though the API exposes all of this, we really don't need to define everything. We can decide which APIs we want to expose via, the, via this connector. So I am interested in uh, in two APIs. So one, I want to get a list of speakers. The next one that I want to get to is a list of sessions for that speaker. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the rest of the So now I have all the actions that I need. So let's start defining each one by one. So I'm going to give get speakers here. Let's all the speakers. Right. Now, one of the things that this can do by default is based on the swagger definition, it has identified that this is a get request. This is the URL, and it has identified the two parameters that needs to be passed to it via the query string. So this is already sorted, we are good. Now you can also define what the response looks like. It's important to define this response because this response will be reflected in Power Apps and Power Automate, etc. So I'm gonna go ahead and click in here. And then what I can do here is I can provide a sample response object and then pop platform will in for the rest I'm not going to go ahead and uh, set up the uh, response headers. The response headers will be inferred based on this JSON object. So I'm going to click on import. Now what Power Platform has done right now is it is um, it has interpreted the entire object structure and created a schema here, which will now be available for Power Automate and for Power Apps. I'm going to go back now that the import and the res import and the output response have been created. I'm going to go to the next service and do the same. Right. 
Now you can do the same thing here. Now this is a get request. Uh, Swagger definition has called out the query string parameters, so Pop Platform has identified that. Now you go to your response, you click on response, click on the import sample, and do the same process for the next. And I have this response ready, so I'm going to drop that in here, click on import. And you can now see that all these values have been created. Now that that is done, I'm going to click on back again. And now I have both my actions defined. All my other actions are not important, so I have deleted the rest of the actions. I can go ahead and click on preview. Now in this screen, you can basically write code that will intercept the input, the, the request and the response pipeline and make changes to the response and request pipelines as needed. But we don't need to do that right now, so I'm gonna continue on to test. Now in test, it actually asks me to create the custom connector before testing. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on create connector. And once this process completes, we should now be able to create a connection and test the connector. All right, so we don't have a connection yet. So what I'm going to do is click on new connection, um, create a connection has been created. It navigates me, takes me away from the custom connectors page. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on edit, go all the way to test again. And now you can see that there are two operations. The selected connection is already listed here. And then I can click on get speakers and select one and click on test operation. And you'll basically get a response. which contains the list of all the speakers. Similarly, if I go to speaker session and select one, click on test operation, and I will get a list of sessions by Scott Q. So this is how you set up a connector from scratch. You can close. Now that you've seen how a connector can be created from scratch, let's look at some of the productivity enhancements around creating connectors. Power Platform has a very tight integration with Azure. You can easily create connectors from Logic Apps, Azure Functions, or services managed by Azure API. It is possible to create these connectors from Power Platform without leaving the Maker portal. You can also create connectors from the Azure portal as well. Now let's take a look at building the connectors the easy way. In this demo, we're going to set up a service on Azure API M and then demonstrate how to consume that API and create a custom connector in your Power Platform environment. So uh, to set up your Azure API M, I'm following this uh, uh, tutorial on this link and uh, it walks you through an existing API that I worked, uh, that you used earlier. Uh, we're going to use the same API, but expose it via the Azure API M front end. So uh, you can follow these steps uh, through the through the document in your tutorial. So I'm just going to walk through the steps here. So now I'm on my Microsoft Azure instance, uh, and I'm on a API M service that I have set up here, and I will go ahead and create a new API from an open API M definition. So you come to API management, click on APIs and then click on Open API. Now this URL, I'm gonna to toggle back to full and provide the specification here. Since I already have it, it comes up here and um, automatically it populates with uh, a few details from this instance. Now the API prefix, I would like to give it conference and then um, we can associate it with an unlimited product that I've associated. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and expose it on HTTPS 
and click on create now once this process is complete um, as an Azure API developer, you want to make sure that the API definitions are all created. Now, there is an easy way to do that with Azure API M. So you can go ahead and click on each session and go to test. So I have a session with an ID 100. I click on send and it will generate. Now, here the content is plain text so we really don't have to generate a signature for this however here I can for example in sessions if I click on I can generate a definition so I click on generate a definition call it get sessions save as definition this is important that you do this and click on create definition similarly i'm going to do this for every single api So now that we've done it for all these methods, let's take a look at how this all works with Power Platform. Now you can do two things. One is you could go to Power Platform and click on create a connector. At that point, you'll see a user interface where you can pick your Power Platform environment and the API name to publish. or you could navigate to the maker portal Now the security has been identified as API key. That's great. Clicking on next. So here's where this gets very interesting. So if you go to get speakers, for example, right, the method that we are interested in, uh, we had to manually set all the parameters on the response. But however, if I click on the response, you'll see that these parameters are pre-populated and that's because it was the way it was set up. So if your API is actually defined properly using a Swagger file, all those definitions are automatically created and you don't have to click to go through the process of import sample again. So we can just check if the other methods are set up the same way. Get speaker session is what we are interested in. So let's go ahead, take a look at the response and it's set up the right way. Um, let's just take another example, get topics. So let's see. So with a single click, instead of having to click on import sample, I have all the APIs that got 
that was automatically inferred. Click on go preview. Move on to test and go ahead and create the connector. So now that you've created your connector from API Azure API directly, let's take a look at how all of this comes together. Let's create an app that will allow a user to look at a list of speakers and then uh, on selecting a speaker, see all the related sessions that this speaker is going to deliver. So to do that, you go back to the maker portal again and then this time you click on apps. Click on new app and go ahead and click on canvas. Let's call it my contest. So conferences. And then click on create. So Now I'd like to connect my data service to this. And I search for Contour so that shows right up. I select Contour so, select that. Right. I'm going to go ahead and set the data store in this as go ahead and select items. And select this as demo conference API dot get speakers. I don't have to pass anything. Collection dot items. Great. Now I'm going to drag a label on my screen. It's automatically got set to href. Right? Leave the name.
Right, so now let's figure out a way where we can get this items collection to display the list of sessions for each of these selected speakers. So um, let's take a look at the, um, the response return from this service. So interestingly enough, if you look at this, you this collection consists of a list of items and within the items there's a href which actually points to the URL itself. Then there is data where each which is actually a collection again with a name value and it has three collections so this title this time slot and speaker now what we need to figure out is how do i get to this value right interesting enough it does contain some uh, pre prefix and postfix so let's go back to perhaps and figure out how to do that all right so let's start where it takes label in. So as you can see, Power Apps automatically identified the first variable that was available and then bound it to the href. So I'm going to change this to uh, what I'd like to see here is uh, I want to first filter the this item dot data where this record dot name is equal to title so this kind of gives me among all the collection and wrap that in a first and go with dot value and that will give me all the list and i'm going to just trim the value and remove all of that then I'm going to introduce another text label and here I'm going to just introduce the next um, I'm going to basically time slot all right so now a little bit of formatting and you should so now if you go back to the maker portal you can see your application show up here i can open up the application and Now see an app. You have now covered what connectors are, how to build a custom connector from scratch and directly from Azure. This then takes us to the next set of questions that a pro developer is interested in. What does versioning of a connector looks like? How do I version my connector definition? How do I deploy my connector? Let's take a look. Versioning. Operations exposed by an API can change over time. As features are added, the input parameters or the output changes. Sometimes these changes break the contract described in the connector definition. While it still falls on the API to ensure backward compatibility, it is the responsibility of the connector author to update the definition so, so as to surface this on the client side, like highlighting a preview version or deprecating an action, etc. To accomplish this, connectors use an annotation object, XMS API annotation. You can apply this at the API level to mark the API as a preview or a production API. At the operational scope, you can use additional properties like review, status, and deprecated attributes to define the state of an action. In this section, we're going to look at how an action called get items evolves from version one to version two. Let's assume that the connector was created when V1 was in place. When V2 is introduced as a preview, you can delineate between the two versions using the revision attribute, which indicates the version, the status, which indicates if the action is a preview or production ready. 
when Vito evolves into being a production ready action, the visibility status can be used to control which of these actions are prominently shown or hidden. Note the status on the API annotation object for V2 has been updated to indicate that it's production ready. Finally, when V1 is deprecated, the deprecated flag is set to true. Using this approach, when makers leverage connectors, Power Automate and Logic Apps will surface the right actions. The Power Platform Connector CLI command tool is designed to aid in custom connectors development. With this, you can export a connector from an environment decompose it to its constituent files and check it into a source control. You can also create a connector from checked in files. In short, this is ALM for your connector. The CLI supports the following operations. The first one, login, which allows you to connect to an environment. The second operation is download. Downloads the specified connector from an environment. A connector consists of three files, an icon for the connector, an API definition, and an API properties file. Sometimes a connector can also contain a settings file. The API definition is nothing but an open API specification. The file is popularly called as a swagger file. The API properties file contains the properties of an API which are not covered by the open API specification. For example, authentication information or additional policies. The icon is a small image representing the connector. The icon will be used by Power Automate and Logic Apps when a maker uses a connector. You can use the settings.json file to hold all the parameters instead of passing it as parameters into the command line. As a best practice, create your connector in an environment, download it, push it into your source control. Recreate the connector in the target environment using the Power Platform Connector CLI. You can distribute your connector within your organization or make it available more publicly. To distribute a connector across an organization, you can package your connector up in a solution, which can then be installed in an environment. Once installed, the users can leverage this connector for apps and flows built in that environment. Another alternative is to upload the connector definition to the Microsoft Power Platform Connector GitHub repo. Once the definition is approved and merged, it can then be used to create a custom connector in any environment directly from the maker portal. If you intend to make the connector available to everyone who uses Power Platform, you can certify your connector. Once it is certified, any maker can search for your connector directly from Power Platform maker portal or app or Power Automate authoring tool and create a connection. So now you have a solid foundation on how Power Platform uses connectors to talk to external services. To build on this knowledge, I strongly recommend you leverage this learning path on Microsoft Learn. This training will cover a lot of the basics that we have covered in this session, but in addition to it, it will also walk you through how to create triggers, creating an open source connector on the, on the Microsoft Power Platform GitHub repo. Here is a handy list of the links that I referred to while I was building this presentation. I hope you found this session on Power Platform Connectors useful in your low-code journey. Thank you for spending your time with us and stay tuned for more sessions. Mm -hmm.